Um, so anyway, thank you very much all the members who are, who are here today. As I mentioned just before lunch, um, non-members are very welcome to, to stay in the room, um, but you don't a actually have any um, voting rights because you're not um, a member of the society. So on any items where we actually talk about voting, um, you can just not put your hands up at all. So I'll always do um, for, against and abstentions. So you can just sit there on your hands. <laughs> Um, if you want to ask any questions, there will be later points during the um, course of the proceedings. I don't plan to for talk for 45 minutes. I always like to plan for a bigger time than is actually needed and finish early, because I find that that gives you happy campus rather than people that are really fed up. <laughs> so I certainly don't intend to blather on for 45 minutes. Anyway, um, so that's the welcome, welcome to the meeting. Um, I think in the room we have got about 20% of the membership, which is pretty good. You obviously all know that we only started last year, so that is a small number, but 20% of a small number is still 20%. <laughs> and bearing in mind we have a worldwide membership and some of them are actually watching online. Um, we actually probably have more people than that, but I'll leave Bob up to that one. <laughs> we've had a couple of apologies today. Um, we've got two members of the committee who, by virtue of their physical distance from this venue, no, they don't live in Cornwall, <laughs> one of them is our treasurer, which is Alex Coles. So she's obviously said, sorry, she can't be with us today. Um, Tessa Keogh is also in the States, so she's not with us today, and Lorna Kinnaird is a member who's actually expressed her apologies for not being able to come. Has anybody got anybody else? Yep. I certainly can. You can remember that, because I'm not writing minutes and nor's anybody else. <laughs> so yeah, you can remember that and I'll write it down in a minute. Okay, which brings us swiftly on to point three. I always like it when we're on point three within about five minutes. Please excuse me, some of this will be slightly scripted because I obviously want to give you factual information rather than blathering my way through, missing out important bits, etc. So, the committee report on the society's activities. You don't have anything written on this, so it will all be from myself. You do in your packs, though, have um, the society accounts, which is a single sheet of A4, which we'll come on to um, after this. So if you wanted to have a look at that and haven't had the opportunity and just want to not listen to me for the next couple of minutes, now's your opportunity to do that. So first, in terms of the committee report, I'd like to personally thank the founding members of our society for their hard work and enormous dedication to the society in the first year. Initially, the team was six, which was Kim, who you heard before lunch, Alex, who I've just told you obviously isn't here, Janet, Julie Gocher, Tessa Keogh, and myself. 18 months later, sorry, 18 months ago even, <laughs> 18 months later, we're still here. 18 months ago, we had the vision of taking the Long Place Studies website, which Alex had initially created, and turning it into a far more active community. We were joined by Susie, firstly as a post holder, and then co-opted onto the committee. And those seven individuals have, without doubt, given an enormous amount more time and effort than their job descriptions actually suggest. And I think a round of applause is the least we can do at this meeting to acknowledge the work that they've done for nothing for our society. This isn't part of a script, but I have to say that sometimes volunteer work, you get a heck of a lot more than you actually expect from people. So thank you very much personally to, from, to all those people. As I say, I don't plan to blabber on too long this afternoon about all the things we've done this year. However, I hope to provide some highlights to whet your appetites and maybe encourage you to become more involved as a member of the society or even as a post holder and or committee member, a point I'll return to you later on. Launching in September 2013, Kim, as webmaster, was some... I think it would be fair to say slightly overwhelmed with the number of membership registrations and study registrations we received in the first month. Beyond our wildest streams, I think it's fair to say. Having stuck our finger in the air and given the bank manager a kind of rough figure of income for year one, it would appear we significantly underestimated. <laughs> but that's at least a great position to be in rather than the reverse. A year after the launch, and on the 4th of October, we had a committee meeting where Kim informed us we had 131 members and so close to the 191 studies. <laughs> that has increased over the last couple of weeks, and in fact, Anne's joined us just in the last week and is our newest member. <laughs> and is here today. Um, we actually have um, 91 studies, as I say, across the continents of North America, Europe, and Australasia. We've got studies ranging from a shepherd's cottage on Exmoor to a street in Market Raisin, cemeteries in Ontario, Canada, to larger towns and everything in between. Your place is your place, and we are never going to place restrictions on what you can register. Though I think we might think you, think you might be slightly barking mad if you wanted to do New York in its entirety, or London in its entirety. Nobody asked us yet. <laughs> Every month since we began, 
We've had an online hangout on topics from taxes and education to our shared endeavour project on World War One, <laughs> delivered by society members as well as guest speakers including Susie Grogan, who Kim mentioned in her talk, whose book Shell Shocked Britain has recently been published by Pen and Sword. The society website contains regular blogs on sources related to one-place studies, and A to Z of our members' studies in April, which, when we, well, to be fair, Julie mainly, blogged our way through the alphabet. Our joint project, and more recently, Family History Month, and a grassroots mapping grant, which we've been shortlisted for, thanks to Skipton Building Society. I think we've got about two weeks till we find out whether we've actually got £500 that we can put towards a mapping project for the society. Fingers crossed, voting's finished, so we can do nothing now. Um, we've been delighted, though, to receive um, input from many of our members across the globe, as well as more regular contributions from some of the committee members that I've also uh, highlighted to you earlier. Last autumn, Janet and Kim developed the concept of an in-depth report for the website, the ability for every member to have a detailed study report about their place, linked from the main study page. Unfortunately, few members have taken this opportunity, though there are some excellent examples available. Maybe one day I'll find a time to do mine. <laughs> Maybe when I'm not the chair of the society anymore, perhaps. <laughs> Every quarter, Tessa produces a sim simply spectacular online newsletter, Destinations. Lots of nodding in the room, which people on the, on the video won't be able to see, but obviously lots of people read that avidly for all the society members. With articles from members across the globe refre reflecting our truly worldwide society, the publication, I'm sure you'll, you'll agree, is very high quality, and many people have commented that they've read it from cover to cover, unable to put it down. During the year, we've also attended various family history fairs here in England, from Buckinghamshire FHS Open Day, Bristol and Avon FHS Open Day, Wiltshire, and several Devon events, which society members were attending as delegates. Posters, uh, brochures and postcards have also been produced to advertise our offerings, and as the year has gone by, more people say yes when I say, have you heard of the society? Which at least is a good start to a conversation. When we started doing them, most people would go, no. i say, that's because we're really new. So then you've got the opening. But now they actually do say, yes, I saw you at Wiltshire or I saw you wherever. So that's really good. Society pin badges, which I'm sporting here, were purchased for the first 100 members of the society. So if you were in the first 100 members of the society, because we didn't want to post them all out, Hence, obviously, our budgets are looking really good. <laughs> you can pick yours up today. I've got a bag full of them. So if you're in the top 100, joined certainly before Christmas last year, you'd have shiny society badge. I've travelled to Canada and Australia this year, and I've taken them out there and handed them out. Um, see, I pay for my flights. The society doesn't pay the postage. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a good way of doing it. Anyway, um, we, we talked, I spoke um, earlier on about the mapping um, concept we had. We've had lots of conversations, and I know that Kim's absolutely gunning to get this grant um, from Skipton Building Society. So it's £500 grassroots grant, that's what it's actually called, grassroots grant, to develop some mapping software. We've been talking with a company called Innovation Mapping, which is based in Atworth, which is based at Bath. Um, and we've been shortlisted 304 shortlisted groups, and there are 161 pots. So you do the maths. You've got a better than 50% chance of getting it. So, as I say, we'll hear in November, and obviously we'll let you know through the blog, all three destinations, depending on the timing of, um, of the news, as soon as we get it. Members have benefit, benefited from reductions on Farris courses, particularly the One Place Study course by Celia Heritage, and more recently the Fixed in Time and Place, using Directories and Gazetteers in Genealogy by Jill Blanchard. The society has gone from strength to strength, and we look forward to another successful year ahead. Thanks to all of you who responded to our member survey to help us understand what success means to you. We obviously had a vision at the beginning of the year, but does that vision actually match what you, the members, want? Well, now we know what you want, so we're working on that as well. I'd like to say a personal thanks to all of the people who have actually sponsored the event today. We've been sponsored by Discover Your Ancestors, British Association for Local History, I'm going to forget somebody in a minute, <laughs> Pen and Sword and Family Tree magazine. So there's four sponsors which has enabled us to keep the cost down for you and provide a really good experience hopefully to the people here but also to the people um, who are viewing this online. So thank you very much to those people. So that's really a quick run through of our report, is that me? A quick run through of our report um, from the committee on the society's activities. Does anybody have any questions or comments they wanted to ask? 
it's the graveyard shift after lunch, so I want to sleep. <laughs> yeah, see. Uh, quick one, if, if you don't get the grant for the uh, mapping software, you don't apply for other grants? Yes. The question was just so that, because um, you're not on the microphone, yeah, yeah. I don't have a raving mic person. <laughs> the question was, um, if we don't get the mapping grant, um, will we apply for others? Yes, of course we will. In fact, I think probably some of us within the group might even just kind of say, we want to do it, there's the cash. Because we want to do it that much. What about some sort of crowdfunding? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely other options. Skipton Building Society was actually brought to our attention by Julie, who was the secretary of the society. Um, so we went for that. We're just keeping the toes crossed, but if we don't get it, of course we'll look for other options. I know that Kim and I are really, really keen to do it. So. And I'd add on, if we do get it, uh, we'll be out looking for anybody in the society who knows anything there is to know about mapping. I think Steve's okay. putting his paws in the sky there. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Any other questions? Now I have a raving mic. No, you should sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> keep it there because it might be in a minute, so just keep it there. <coughs> If you want to. <laughs> oh, Margaret's even got you a chair at the front, look. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you, folks. So we'll move on to the society accounts. So you've got those in your packs. They are basically um, all of the income and expenditure for the, for the society this year. I hope that they're fairly self explanatory. Um, they're obviously not produced by myself. That's why I have a big treasurer, because figures are mathematically to A level fine with me, but not when it comes to doing things like that. So uh, I hope. Either they make absolute sense and you have no questions, or whatever questions you have, I will be able to answer. She says with her fingers firmly crossed. <laughs> yes. Hang on. Hold it. Hold fire. <laughs> when, when, when it says trust funds, does that just mean investment or? I don't know. Can I have a copy of somebody? I haven't brought them to the front, which is a bit of cloud planning for me. Why is it just nice to come up when funds of our trust? Which trust funds? Yeah, it's, you've got assets and you've got liabilities. And <coughs> yeah, it's actual held funds. So when it's underneath, you've got current year earnings and trust funds, as in funds cash that we have. Hand, yeah, cash, cash in the bank. Yeah. Not literally in my hand. Yeah, not in my hand. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the figure that you're looking at, I think, in terms of the difference piece, perhaps, is that there's trust funds 215 underneath current year earnings. Yeah. And the 215 relates to the fact that um, we had that on that date last year, which was the 30th of September because we kind of launched a month before our actual financial year started. So that's kind of in the bank from the uh, from the start-up month. Does that make a bit more sense? Yeah. Brilliant. Actually sounded like I knew something about finances <laughs> there. We, we, we were convinced. We were convinced. As long as I can convince you, that's the main thing. <laughs> okay, yes, John. I have a runner. Well, <laughs> 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 We've got here um, conference fees as a receipt of £585, yep. but apparently nothing for com conference expenses. No, because I only it's paid it on my credit card two days ago. <laughs> so it'll be in the next year's account. Yeah, so it will be in the accruals. Okay. Gosh, that sounded like a good accountancy <laughs> word too, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> <Is> it <learning? laughs> I actually do know what it means. I've learned from a jolly good treasurer that I've worked with for a long time. Any others? Brilliant. Okay, guys. What we actually need at this point is someone to propose that we accept the accounts as written. Steve's got his hand in the sky. I'm just going to write that down. I'll laugh again. So, Steve, and who'd like to second it? John. Thank you very much. I've put John D. So I remember which one. <laughs> okay. All those in favour accept, of accepting the accounts as written. Wonderful. All those against. All those abstaining. Therefore, carried unanimously by the people in the room. Thank you very much. Okay, great. So we'll then move on to the result of the society election. So we asked for nominations for the society, and there were six people willing to stand for the forthcoming year, which is John Bailey. Would you like to stand and introduce yourself? Not introduce yourself verbally, but <laughs> so everybody knows who John B uh, is. <laughs> I'm John B, the first or the second? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So John's going to be joining the team this year. Kim, Alex. So that's Kim Baldacchino, I always pronounce your surname wrong, despite, despite knowing you for so long. Baldacchino, I'll get it right one day. More training required. Um, Alex Coles, Janet Few, myself, Kirsty Gray, and Susie Morley. So it's within the remit of the annual general meeting within our constitution to actually vote on the election of a chair and treasurer. And we have one volunteer for each post. So I would like to propose that Janet Few is going to be the chair of the society for the forthcoming year, and Alex Coles as treasurer. Would anyone like to second that? Do you want me to go outside? 
Well, they can all say, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, I think if they don't want you, there's nobody else on the table. <laughs> I think Susie was the quickest for the second name. All those in favour of those, uh, those elections? All those against? All those who've fallen asleep and are abstaining? <laughs> Wonderful, carried unanimously. No? Nope. I think it's only the last bit. I've done this, I don't think I've ever done an AGM in this quick time. This is rather good. We've put a, a loose date in the diary for next year's AGM, which we're hoping to have on the 21st of November. We're having it a little bit later next year because our financial year ends basically at the end of September. So producing all the accounts and things like that in this short space of time is actually quite challenging, especially when we're dealing with different time zones. So um, we're going to extend the AGM and put it into November, so the 21st of November. We don't have a venue as yet, and we're not going to tell you our exact um, title because it's going to be based on our shared endeavour project for next year, which we don't want to let out of the bag yet. <laughs> so that will be the plan for next year. So, although I haven't got AOB on the bottom, does anybody have any questions, or would they all like to have a good chin wag and go and spend some money for the next 20 minutes before Simon starts his talk? <laughs> well, turn if you could start Simon's talk and we'll have a look at a longer copy. Yeah, I could do. When will you be announcing the shared endeavour for next year? I don't know. I think you better look at the two people, one who's behind you and one who's over there who's running it. <laughs> I think um, I think somebody didn't want to. For a little while. They already be out. Why did they? Oh, all right, go for it, Janet. Okay, Jake. I think Janet will in that case. I was told by that person who's part of the endeavour not to do it, so I listened. Nobody told me. She's she's the chair now, so she can do whatever she likes. I'm just trying to get to retirement. I've probably already let the cat out of the bag because nobody told me I wasn't supposed to. Um, very broadly, Kim and I will be looking together at migration. And so that will be uh, not just people coming into your place or go, leaving your place from two miles away, but extend to anything to going to the other side of the world. Now clearly, for, particularly for the benefit of anyone who's listening online, <clears throat> this will be very different for the people who have got um, studies in what I like to call the colonies, which I always include in America in that. Alone, Calais, that's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. so, uh, <laughs> See, I'm on camera, but you're not. I'm just going to take away from the camera. <laughs> um, but in, in fact, uh, it will be very different, which will be interesting, I think, because clearly the majority of places that are, let's say, in Canada or, or Australia, will be looking at movements of people inwards, where most of us with studies in the UK are more likely to be looking at movement outwards, but not necessarily. If your place is in a new town somewhere, then maybe you'll be looking at movement inwards. And that's very broadly it, and there will be more. And we're, we're, we're going to try and break it down into little tiny bite-sized chunks so that it will be possible to just do bits of it, rather than thinking, oh, I haven't got time to take on something as big as that. So that, that's very broadly the plan. Brilliant. Mm. Right, you can kill her later, Kim. Uh, expect a hangout probably in December or so. Yes, yeah, I think that's what we signed. Yeah. Yeah. Gen January. But I hope everybody will, uh, will give it serious consideration. Well, thank you, Kate. So I'm going to switch you off now. Okay. I'll press the wrong button anyway. Okay, I think that wraps up the AGM. I think that's probably my world record, having done quite a few of these over the last couple of years. 22 minutes. <laughs>